Welcome to the Kiva Partner Academy. This lesson provides an overview of the client waiver. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand what the client waiver is and why it is important, understand the three types of client waivers, train field staff on how to collect client waivers, train field staff on the appropriate steps to follow when a borrower is unable to read or sign the client waiver, and determine a good method for storing client waivers in your office. This lesson is intended for management. You should understand the legal implications of the client waiver and how it protects your organization and the Kiva coordinator. You will be responsible for ensuring that field staff understand how to collect client waivers in the field. In addition, you will be responsible for ensuring that signed waivers are properly stored. First, we will learn about what the client waiver is and why it is important. The client waiver is a legal document developed by Kiva. By signing the client waiver, the borrower grants permission to Kiva and your organization to publish his or her information and photo on the internet. Kiva's policy is that a borrower must sign the client waiver before his or her profile is posted on the Kiva website. If any extra people appear in the photo, they must also sign a client waiver. Signed client waivers must be stored in such a way that the waiver for a specific borrower or group can be retrieved with 24 hours notice by Akiva. The client waiver is important because Kiva is committed to principles of client protection. We do not want to publicly share a borrower's personal information and photo. We do not have his or her permission. The client waiver also protects Kiva and your organization from legal action in the future. Kiva will provide you with a copy of the standard client waiver during the setup process. The client waiver is available in many languages. If you would like to request changes to the text in the client waiver, please contact Kiva. Any changes must be approved by Kiva's legal department. Translating the client waiver into a different language also requires approval from Kiva's legal department. If you need the client waiver translated, please contact Kiva. Now, let's take a look at the different types of client waivers. There are three types of client waivers, individual signature, multiple signatures, and group leader signature. Depending on how loans are structured at your organization, you may only need to use one type of waiver. Contact Kiva if you have any questions about which waiver you should use. The first type of waiver is the individual signature waiver. It can be used for individual or group loans, and it has space for one signature. For an individual loan, the individual borrower needs to sign the waiver. The individual signature waiver can also be used for a group loan when the group leader does not have legal authority to sign on behalf of the group and you prefer each group member to sign his or her own separate waiver. The second type of waiver is the multiple signatures waiver. It should be used for group loans, and it has spaces for the signatures of all group members. The multiple signatures waiver should be used when the group leader does not have legal authority to sign on behalf of the group, and you prefer all group members to sign the same waiver. Finally, the third type of waiver is the group leader signature waiver. It should be used for group loans, and it has space for only the group leader signature. The group leader signature waiver should be used when the group leader has the legal authority to sign on behalf of the entire group. To determine whether the group leader has this authority, consult your organization's policy for loan documents. If the group leader has the authority to sign the loan documents on behalf of the group, the group leader also has the authority to sign the client waiver on behalf of the group. Next, let's learn how to collect client waivers in the field. As we learned earlier in this lesson, a borrower must sign the client waiver before his or her profile is posted on the Kiva website. Therefore, it is recommended that field staff ask the borrower to sign the waiver at the same time that they are collecting the borrower's personal information and photo. Field staff should follow this basic procedure to obtain a borrower's signature on the client waiver. Step 1. Explain the waiver to the borrower. Step 2. 
give the borrower sufficient time to read the entire waiver. Step 3. Answer any questions from the borrower. Step 4. Ask the borrower to sign the waiver. And Step 5. Take the signed waiver back to your office for storage. At minimum, Kiva expects field staff to verbally explain the following points to the borrower before he or she signs the client waiver. 1. His or her first name, loan use, and personal information will be shared publicly on the internet. 2. His or her photo will be shared publicly on the internet. 3. His or her loan repayment information will be shared publicly on the internet. 4. Having information on the internet means that it is visible to people all around the world. And five, signing the client waiver document gives your organization and Kiva these permissions. There are many different ways to explain the waiver. Here is a sample explanation that was developed by Kiva. Prosperity Finance is working with an organization called Kiva to help us raise funds for loans. Kiva operates a website where Prosperity Finance can publish profiles of clients who are seeking loans. People from all over the world visit Kiva's website to read these profiles and lend their money to clients they would like to support. They lend their money because they want to help Prosperity Finance's clients improve their businesses and they are interested in learning more about Zimbabwe. We would like to publish a profile about you on Kiva's website. This profile would include your name, your photo, information about your loan and repayments, and information about your business and family life. If you agree to participate, please read and sign this waiver. Having your information on a website is similar to being in a newspaper or a magazine. Many different people around the world will be able to see your information and photo. If a borrower does not want to sign the waiver, his or her profile cannot be posted on Kiva. There are no exceptions. If a borrower does not want to be on Kiva, it is up to your organization to decide if the borrower can still receive a loan. If your organization has funding available, Kiva considers it a best practice for an eligible borrower to receive a loan even if they are not posted to Kiva. Next, let's learn how to obtain consent in special circumstances. There are special procedures that must be followed if the borrower is unable to read or sign the waiver. For example, the borrower may be illiterate or visually impaired, or the client waiver may not be available in a language that the borrower can read. In these cases, field staff should follow this procedure to obtain the borrower's consent. Step 1. Read the entire waiver to the borrower, or if the waiver is in a language that the borrower does not understand, verbally translate the entire waiver for them. Step two, answer any questions from the borrower. Step three, ask the borrower to provide verbal consent. Step four, print the borrower's name and information on the waiver. Step five, ask the borrower to sign the waiver. This step is only applicable if the borrower is able to provide a written signature or signature alternative, such as a thumbprint or X. Step 6. Sign and date the Partner Organization Representative field at the bottom of the waiver. And Step 7. Take the signed waiver back to your office for storage. Finally, let's learn how to store signed waivers. Field staff must bring signed waivers back to the office so that they can be stored in a secure location indefinitely. A signed waiver serves as a record of the borrower's consent and protects Kiva and your organization from legal action. You can choose to store either the signed paper hard copy and or a digital soft copy. Here are two recommended storage methods. One, scan the signed waiver and save a digital copy in your organization's database. Two, file the signed waiver with the borrower's loan documents, for example, in the borrower's folder or binder. When posting a new loan to Kiva's website, you will be asked to confirm that you have a signed client waiver on file before proceeding. Kiva regularly conducts audits of client waivers. Signed waivers must be stored in such a way that the waiver for a specific borrower or group can be retrieved with 24 hours notice by Kiva. 
Kiefer considers it a serious violation if a field partner is unable to locate the signed client waiver for a borrower on Kiva. Kiva usually refunds loans that do not have a signed client waiver on file. In addition, possible consequences include pausing the partnership or a reduction in your organization's credit limit. That brings us to the end of this lesson. You should now be able to understand what the client waiver is and why it is important. Understand the three types of client waivers. Train field staff on how to collect client waivers. Train field staff on the appropriate steps to follow when a borrower is unable to read or sign the client waiver. And determine a good method for storing signed client waivers in your office. Thank you for completing this lesson of the Kiva Partner Academy. We hope to see you again soon.